So guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, doing things a little different. I'm just getting out with a light backpack and I'm having a go with my Canon R7 and my uh, 800mm RF f11 lens, which I bought, it's gotta be 18 months ago now, I guess, and I haven't really used it an awful lot. And I, I previously bought it really just for video after doing a workshop with a, a chap that used it. Uh, I was really impressed with it actually for the video capabilities and for some stills in especially in good light. Um, so I'm here in the forest today, I'm on my local parks and just after some autumn bird species. There's lots of American robins here. There's a few waxwing about. Um, there's lots of raccoons like hibernating in the trees, lots of squirrel species and stuff like that. So I thought I'd take this lens out, give it a go and see um, what's about. I've got loads of squirrels just coming up behind me now certainly having and chasing each other around. So at the moment, this place is kind of alive with thrush species. Um, they call it American robin, but it's basically a thrush. It's the size of a blackbird and it isn't really a robin. But anyway, we'll go with that. We'll go with American robin. We are in Canada at least, so we've got to go with their bird species. Um, so I'm just gonna have a wander around, test the lens out in varying conditions, obviously inside the forest here. Um, a lot of the leaves have gone on the trees, so the canopy is quite open now, so it lets a lot more light in, so it's a little bit more forgiving using this lens. Obviously, f11 being quite a difference than using my um, f4s, f2.8s, but still, it's a really good lens, and I haven't really tested it as much as I'd like, so I thought we'd have a move through the woods today and go out into the, um, some of the open grassed areas, have a look, and uh, see what's about. It's got an awful lot of American robins in here, there's chickadees singing away. Like most thrush species, they're quite twitchy as well. Um, there's large flocks of them here. Can you hear them in there? Oh, it's alive with them in there. They've got a blue jay there going through, just flushed a load of um, robins over the top. But they've moved down from up north down to the southern parts here because I'm right on Lake Ontario and obviously it's a damn sight warmer here than it is up north. Um, whether some of them will then move over to America from here, um, but a lot of them will stay here and they're feeding on like crab apples and berries at the moment. So got a few trees earmarked, with, which is a um, really good spot for the, um, the robins and also hopefully maybe a waxwing. I'm going to head over there now and have a look. So guys, it's probably hard for you to see here to pick out detail in the trees, but I've got a crab apple tree here, just there, which is rather nice. And there's a few dead trees in here. And this is what I see every morning generally, nine times out of 10, I see a Cooper's hawk or a red-tailed hawk. Usually the Cooper's hawk sitting in one of these dead trees here every morning without fail. Never have my camera on me. Um, and generally it's too dark anyway. But I'm hoping to keep an eye on these trees when I'm walking about. If I get the uh, hawk comes in and lands, hopefully you better get set up, got a tripod with me. Um, and then I can set up this on a tripod and hopefully better get some, some shots and maybe a bit of video of the, uh, of the Cooper's hawk just chilling out in the tree. It's relatively habituated, I guess. Um, but I just have to see and uh, see if we can get a great shot of it. Just had the Cooper's Hawk come in, literally, just finished vlogging, got the tripod out, and the Cooper's Hawk's just come in to land. Um, I've now mounted the 800 onto the tripod. Got to be really careful here. I think it's quite obscured by all the trees, so I've got to be careful. Just be a bit cautious here. I see it now. You can see it up in the trees. Just settle down here. Well, that's fantastic, guys. Uh, I never expect to see the hawk so quickly. Managed to get a few shots through the trees. No idea what they're going to be like. Today is quite overcast. It's still quite bright. 
so it's quite a dull bird. I've put a lot of exposure compensation on there to see if I could boost it up a bit, pick a bit out, but I think we did all right by getting a little bit of video and, um, and a few possible stills there. But don't forget, guys, this is not really going to be any award-winning images here. These are just going to test this lens out for the video and for the stills capability in quite tricky light. Um, obviously not being that bright, shooting at quite high ISO as well. Um, and that f11 as well but this lens is a magical combo really if you're just setting out in wildlife photography the r7 it's not overly expensive it's a great camera it's got that 1.6 crop sensor on it on the 800 that gives you 1280 millimeters of reach at f11 that's phenomenal in good light you can go out with this combo carry it around with you all day not get a bad back not get a sore arm or anything and it actually weighs um around about 1.8 kilograms so really really lightweight combo there um, and well worth considering if you don't want to spend an order amount of money on photography equipment just to get you started to get you out in the field just got american robins here at the moment terribly silhouetted not the best lovely to see though lovely got a, as you see on there I've got a Kirk bracket and I bought that um, especially so it just clags on there Arco Swiss type style there um, and that was purchased separately as was the lens hood which you don't get with the lens now this is not a plug for the lens to, to go out and buy it I'm not endorsed by Canon or anything this is just literally um, a bit of a look in the field what this lens can do on days like today obviously I'm shooting quite high ISO um, and the lens is at f11 obviously so that does present a few problems especially in low light shooting at high iso overcast weather early morning evening and stuff like that so um, but just getting out and have a go with it really i'm hoping to concentrate on a, a lovely crab apple tree over there which has got a lot of um, american robins on hoping to hang around here a little bit longer to see if we can get a bit of a closer look at one of the um, hawks coming in um, it's a really good spot here as well for some northern flickers if they're still about and also some woodpecker species that just like to climb up these vertical branches looking for insects and just tapping away on the wood. So we're gonna stay here for 20 minutes and uh, see what happens. As you can probably tell, I've got a nice big puffer jacket on. Temperature today is like minus three. Temperature's really dropped here in Canada and um, it's gonna to continue to, to, to plummet, I think. And uh, yeah, for a guy from the UK living in the South, yeah, I'm certainly, certainly starting to get the um, feeling that the weather is definitely well and truly on its way. And I think I don't really appreciate how cold it's going to get but um yeah gloves on as well today got my little valorette inners on um just to keep the uh, the cold off my fingers but uh, there's a little cool breeze coming towards as well um there's a american robin just gone over so back to it and hopefully we'll get uh, a little bit closer shots of the hawk and maybe head up and see if we can get some of the thrush species on that crab apple tree trying a bit of video out there and one thing you have got with this lens is that obviously this is on a crop sensor body so the looking through the viewfinder or through the EVF you've got a reduced area to work with um, and obviously on a full frame that's much larger um, but this has got a limited field of view even on a full frame this 800 so you won't get the f to use the full frame you'll only get to use a limited de defined square inside of that um, so that is a limiting option there with the f11 um, but still you know you've got to go with what you work with and actually the af on there is pretty damn good can't hear the is at all it's got image stabilization it's just quietly going about its business there locking onto the target brilliant you know doing a bit of videos constantly tracking it got to the extremities of the square and it was slightly missed out and it was focusing in and out but then the bird would turn its head and then it would find it acquire the eye again and then it would refocus so it's obviously not as good it's a prime lens f11 but it's not going to be like a you know an f2.8 f4 um etc you know it has limitations but you know for the price it's punched at and the weight of it handheld you know it's a pretty good lens really to be considered um and to say i bought it and i quite enjoy using it really and when i'm doing handheld stuff as well i haven't done much action birds in flight we're going to have a go at that hopefully maybe if we get hawk land and just see where we are but we're going to go with what we've got it's just nice to get out and give it a go really
So you guys, so far it's been a joy to use this lens really. As I said, lightweight, it's nice with the R7. There are a few downsides obviously. The focus isn't as snappy as you'd like, but it's kind of expected for a lens priced at that and with that f11. Also the, the focal length is really quite considerable. So trying to find any subject, you're right in on it. So, you know, you haven't got that area to play around with. You're kind of like fumbling around trying, I've just been taking pictures of some dark eyed juncos over there just feeding below the trees and trying to focus a small bird on the ground. It's really hard when you're quite close with an 800. So you've got to bear that in mind. Plus your field of view is a lot smaller and you've got that square I talked about before to work with. So that's quite limiting. But as soon as it picks up the bird, the IAF bangs straight on it and it's really, really good. You know, it's for what it is, it's remarkably good. Um, obviously, I haven't seen what the images look like on the computer yet. Um, and this light is tricky. Um, but I really hope that uh, some of them have come out pretty good. So I'm just heading back across the park. Just seen a large group of robins, I think, up on some old dead trees. So I'm going to set up and uh, see if we can get some better shots. So I'm having a cracking time uh, filming these American robins here. Um, beautiful thrushes, and you can see on the screen there, got two sitting in the tree. Beautiful coloration, just seeing a couple feeding in there. I'm really hoping the um, RF 800 F11 is going to crack on some great images amongst the uh, 30 odd million pixels of the R7. I think it's 32 or something. I never get too wrapped up in the pixels, really. It delivers great pictures, that's all I'm worried about. Um, but it's a hive of industry here, as you can see behind me here. Loads of the birds up in the trees there. Beautiful. I'm just coming down on the ground because it's not too frozen in here. And they're managing to get some earthworms out the ground. But uh, yeah, fantastic. Every time a jay goes over, they all flash and fly. Um, and then they come back, settle, and then, um, and then resume. We've got a woodpecker as well that flew over real low here and just went right on the ground, which is quite unusual. But uh, anyway, back to it. Well guys, I think I needed my scaddy zipper mitts today because it's flipping freezing. My hands are dropping off at the moment. It may not look it, but it is so cold, my hands. Um, yeah, but it's fantastic. I'm surprised there's no raptor species in here at the moment because there's so many thrushes. And now we've had a load of starlings just introduced now. There's at least like a dozen starlings up in the tree there just calling away. That's an introduced species to Canada. Um, not that welcome, I don't think, but um, they're here. Um, but I'm thoroughly enjoying time with these robins. So you may get robin overload, um, but this is just really testing out the camera. I am um, using quite a bit of exposure compensation up to two stops um, above. So just trying to get the, because it's quite dull and the, the birds are beautiful in color as well. And it's nice to bring that color out. They're just in front of me now here, as you can see on the ground. So they're not very far away. Um, but yes, yeah, beautiful to spend time with them. It really is. I'm going to get down a bit lower now with the lens, take it off the tripod, see if we can get some tight shots.
this is hugely special for me. My first ever wax wings. Unbelievable. Wow. I've got five wax wings on the camera. At the moment, they are absolutely amazing. I've always wanted to see a wax wing. I can't believe I've never seen one. Uh, there's actually seven up there. Unbelievable. I, I'm not sure if they're cedar wax wings or what, but. So guys, this is what you can see what the birds are feeding on. We've got a tree here, which I actually don't know what it is. It looks like a kind of hawthorn, like a horse. It's not spiky, that actually it is quite spiky. So it's a type of hawthorn, but the berries are massive. Um, these are probably a little bit too big for some of the bird species, um, but they will peck at them and they will, you know, grind them down a little bit and feed off little bits of it. Um, but there's still loads on this one. And if we walk over to the, to the rowan tree, um, I think this is the tree that initially saw the wax wings on and there's a berry tree below it with some blackberries which I don't know what they are but we've got a rowan just up there with the brown leaf and there's only a few berries left on there so they completely strip that um, so they'll just come through and mass with other bird species and they'll just go through park to park and strip those trees of berries and then move on but there's still quite a lot here. So hopefully I'll come back in a few days and hopefully they'll still be here. Also here guys, we've got another tree. We've got a, they look pretty gone over now to be fair, but there's some crab apples in there. Another great indication. So if you're out on the ground in your local park, do a little bit of a recce. You know, I've been here most mornings, as I said, and I don't always see the species I've seen today. So it's basically a case of staking out, be patient, the birds will come. Um, and the windfall apples are great for, for thrush species, for starlings um, and other bird species that take advantage of that, giving that energy boost, especially now the temperature has dropped massively. Um, but just something to think about, a bit of field craft there, identify the trees, rowans are a big one, um, and obviously the rose hips and hawthorn, haws, etc. And I don't know what that other blackberry species is over there, but obviously clearly they're obviously a good indicator for most of the bird species as well. But just something to bear in mind when you're out and about just to give you that little added advantage of um, locating those bird species. So guys, that concludes the video for today. I think you can tell the smile on my face um, how chuffed I am to see the wax wings today. That was definitely the best part of today's video. It's been awesome. I mean, to see six or seven birds like that, the cedar wax wing, absolutely beautiful. I haven't even seen a wax wing in the UK and they've got the, both the cedar and the bohemian wax wing here in Canada. But, oh, chuffed a bit, American robins, dark-eyed juncos, Cooper's hawk, starlings. Um, we've had uh, northern cardinals and loads of other smaller bird species. It's been fantastic. You know, go check out your local park. I walk through every day and I've never seen a display of birds like that. You know, it's gone real quiet now. They've stripped a lot of the berries off the rowan tree. So they've now moved on to other parks and areas of forest to then, you know, feed up and, and clear more as they're moving through. But, oh, fantastic. And it was a great opportunity as well today to try the R7 with the RF 800 F11. Now, obviously, as I said before, throughout the video, F11, you know, it's not like your F2.8s, your F4s and your F5.6s. You know, it's going to be a, a lot different 
optical quality definitely and also shooting in low light and difficult uh, lighting situations but you know as a lens if you're starting out in wildlife photography with the r7 a really lightweight outfit it weighs just over 1.8 kilograms that includes the lens hood the memory card the battery and the camera you can carry that round all day long and it will not you know get too heavy for you to hold it's so lightweight i got my son to hold it it's so light he really is um you know so it's well worth a consideration in your camera bag yeah for those seasoned pros out there probably not worth it but for me i bought it um for video you know because it's got that great reach you know it's got 1280 millimeters on a 1.6 r7 crop you know, 1280 millimeters is fantastic. But like I said, you know, the lighting is not brilliant. It's quite overcast. Um, shooting at high ISO, the R7 does struggle a little bit, um, but it does recover well in post-processing. And I think the images really speak for themselves, really, to checking out the optical quality, because today I only shot in C-RAW and only with that outfit today. And I think, you know, I'm really, really impressed with the lighting conditions of what it's actually delivered. But uh, no, fantastic, absolutely, you know, chuffed to bits. Um, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been great. I never expected to see what I'd, I'd seen today. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping to head back maybe later in the week to have another go. But um, really appreciate for all the people that subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment and give me a nice like. Really do appreciate it. And for those that subscribe to the channel as well, I've noticed on my statistics that only about 28% of people that subscribe click that bell to be notified of any videos coming out and that's kind of vitally important for me but also for you if you if you miss out on a video um, some people may not like that function that's fair enough but for those that haven't click that bell to be notified and um, you'll get uh, a little um, notification up in the corner to let you know that I've released a video and for those that don't subscribe to the channel and fancy giving it a go you know please click that all important subscribe button and please leave us a comment and a like um, it would be much appreciated and I reply to every single uh, comment that I am given so uh, yeah great to interact with you all guys I've really enjoyed it stick stick with me for more Canadian adventures every Saturday I'll be traveling around the local area and a bit further afield to deliver more wildlife here from the great white north but from me in my local park with the beautiful birds that have now gone I'll see you next time mm -hmm.